Hello friends, today we'll be talking about percutaneous fixation of scaphoid and biologic, biological option. Scaphoid is a bone, a very small bone, but there are books which are written on this scaphoid and its fractures. But we'll try to cover this talk 10 minutes, so we'll be taking only small portion of scaphoid like acute fixation with the percutaneous method. If we see how scaphoid fracture management has evolved, Watson Jones 1934 said all fractures will unite. Bolo said in 1954 that uh, proximal pole and patients who are old can take six or seven months to unite. And one case report was there where immobilization was done for more than a year. Rusi said uh, operative uh, treatment is preferable. McLaughlin in 1969 said all displaced fracture require internal fixation. Percutaneous fixation why? Because uh, scaphoid is a very per precarious blood supply and whenever there is a fracture there is some amount of disruption of the blood supply and when we do open reduction cut the capsule the disruption can further happen. So we try to do things in minimally invasive methods so that uh, uh, blood supply is preserved. Prerequisites for percutaneous fixation besides surgical skills there are other things which are required. One is the fracture should be minimally displaced or undisplaced. Uh, if it is displaced it should be closely reducible. If it, you cannot reduce the fracture closely then no need of doing percutaneous fixation. Just change your plan to open reduction, internal fixation because reduction is a very important part of this uh, scaphoid treatment. Uh, we need a cannulated screw system. There are many systems which are available in markets. So cannulated headless screw system is required. And definitely good imaging should be there. Without good imaging, uh, minimally invasive surgeries are not possible. So these are the few different types of uh, headless cannulated screw systems available. I'll not go into the details. And percutaneous fixation, as we have already discussed, it maintains the vascularity of the scaphoid. Preoperatively, we should position our uh, wrist, uh, which we are going to operate under image intensifier. So positioning is important to prevent uh, repeated shoot, uh, exposures. Determination, we should determine what is the direction of wire on the CM over the skin and we make the mark along the direction of the wire. Once we have uh, decided direction of wire, we uh, give a small incision, open the capsule with artery forceps. Uh, in real case scenario, usually we use a sleeve or a needle. 16 gauge or 14 gauge needle works very fine to prevent the extensor tendon injury. But here we are not using it because we don't want, uh, we want to have better pictures. So we have passed your guide wire and you are satisfied in all MA views and then you drill over the guide wire again check see every step you have to confirm and check the direction of the wire direction of the screw once you're satisfied and drilling is done you pass your screw over the guide wire and once you pass the screw uh, you tighten to achieve compression there are different screw systems available. This one is differential pitch. So as you tighten the screw automatically because of the differential pitch, the, there's a fracture compression at the fracture side. But other systems are also available in which yeah, the two components, they move independent of each other with two screwdrivers or there's a sleeve over the, uh, sleeve over the screw so that it acts as a compression. So once you have done it, remove your guide wire, again check position in all direction and once you have satisfied, then you can close the wound, single stitch is good enough, either you can use non-absorbable or absorbable, it doesn't matter, it's a single stitch. But what happens, so the guide wires are thin, 0.5 to 1.1 uh, mm guide wires are used in different, different system. Uh, guide wires can break uh, during drilling, especially when guide wires are reused and they are bent, they can break. For that, there is another solution. What we proposed was cannulated guide wires. Cannulated guide wires is 
that outer wire is cannulated and inner wire is same as what we have for the system. So additional thing here is uh, cannulated guide wire. So what we do, we pass our outer guide wire as we pass our system, uh, as we pass our normal guide wire and check under image intensifier the direction. Uh, advantage here is because this is thicker, you can use it as a joystick. So you can use for manipulation of the fractures. Once you have put in your outer guide wire, then you satisfied with the position. Then you pass your inner guide wire and drill it further so that you can pass your screw. So you put in your inner guide wire which goes beyond your outer guide wire and then you remove your outer guide wire here because outer guide wire has similar thickness uh, as a drill so we don't need a drill and then we can do rest of the thing by putting a screw over that guide wire so rest of the steps are same same thing can be done in percutaneous method also by using a uh, vola approach in volar approach, we pass a screw from the scaphoid tubercle to a retrograde method as shown in these pictures. Uh, only thing we have to remember, we have to dorsiflex, uh, dorsiflex the wrist so that, our, so that our scaphoid distal part and scaphoid tubercle, they become very prominent. So it is easy to insert a wire. Uh, this is how you do it and this is what I was talking about a needle. You can use a simple hypodermic needle to uh, which acts as a sleeve as well as it helps in uh, giving the direction to the guide wire. So this is a simple way. Other approaches, uh, volar approaches going through the trapezium. See going through the trapezium as you can see the position of the screw is more central. So biomechanically, it is more advantageous thing. Only thing is you have to drill through the trapezium, but your screw should remain only in the scaphoid. So you pass your screw through the trapezium into the scaphoid. Length is so much so that it is not protruding out. So you have to be accurate about your length. Uh, other thing by animation, we can see we fracture scaphoid. We pass in a guide wire. Uh, we pass in a second guide wire to prevent the rotation. Then you measure the length of the screw. Once you have measured the length of the screw, you pass in your further guide wire further in so that once you drill it, it doesn't come out. So you drill it till the desired depth and you pass in the screw uh, when it is a differential pitch. So once you pass in your screw, it causes compression at the fracture site. So now you can do one thing, you can remove the second wire, but if you're not removing the second wire, you think there's enough space, then you can pass your second screw also through that wire to provide the additional rotational stability. This was a patient in which we did a second guide wire because there was some amount of gap and we wanted to give additional stability, so second screw was passed. Here we done a 3 mm and 2.4 mm two different sizes of screw because uh, either we can use 2 2 or 2.4 or we can use 1 3 mm 2.4 1 uh, what happens why we using this because this is the differential pitch screw it automatically gives compression at the fracture site and this is a simple screw it's a headless screw but it doesn't provide compression when you are not using a sleeve over it so it acts as a uh, derotation screw other thing which is available for minimally invasive biological method is arthroscopic assisted fixation. Uh, the fixation is percutaneous. The only thing is uh, through the arthroscope, uh, we uh, put it under mid-carpal joint. Uh, through the mid-carpal joint, we can uh, see the fracture, so, uh, visualize the fracture, confirm its reduction, and we can uh, mobilize these cases early. This was one of the cases, arthroscopic assisted fixation of the scaphoid in which at fifth day we can mobilize this patient, uh, good dorsiflexion, good palmoflexion and good radial deviation. So this was the patient, he, uh, he had his board exams coming up so he didn't want a, he didn't want a uh, immobilization so we went for a arthroscopic assisted fixation for him. Uh, once we are done 
the fixation on fifth day he could write that was a main advantage because he didn't want to miss his exam board uh, board exams very important exam so on the fifth day he could able to write very comfortably so because of this uh, he could give his exams and he passed his exams so what are the indications of percutaneous fixation undisplaced minimally displaced fractures acute fractures undisplaced fibrous non unions you can do it because once you achieve a compression uh, then uh, union can take place you can do stable non union without bone grafting also we'll see in the literature other thing we can use percutaneous fixation and arthroscopic assisted bone grafting also can be done uh, this is not in part of our talk we'll talk about it later so if we do the literature review Uh, 1970, first time 4 mm cannulated screw was used for percutaneous fixation of the scaphoid. By 2001, this was uh, published uh, uh, by Bond et al. Alexander Shin. I had a opportunity to work with him, so they did a study in a, a military personnel, and they found that percutaneous fixation. a uh, radiographic union was faster return to military duty was much faster compared to the cast immobilization uh, we did our own published our own series also in which we did a percutaneous fixation through the dorsal approach and we found that uh, acute fractures as well as delayed non unions uh, b1 b2 and c type of uh, non unions it was uh, showing good results then there is another paper which was published in 1914 where we compare uh, where it was uh, two methods of volar approach was compared so standard method standard volar approach as we discussed which avoided trapezium second was trans trapezoidal approach we, uh, the this was a cadaveric study they found that biomechanically uh, there was a advantage when we going trans trapezoidal approach so this is from the same study this is conventional this is through the trapezium through the center of the scaphoid in the lateral view it is again eccentric in the distal pole central in the proximal pole but through trans trapezoidal we are central throughout the axis so that is an advantage another study published in 2011 in which non union for non union with substantial bone loss the fixation was done percutaneously and achieved good results so this was it so outcome of percutaneous fixation these are the various studies as you can see later part of the studies almost 100% union seen in percutaneous fixation because of uh, good selection or the uh, uh, they, it could be that uh, um, biology is maintained so union is faster so take home message is percutaneous fixation is a safe procedure which allows early mobilization after fixation dorsal anticrate uh, method is preferable for proximal pole uh, while doing a op, uh, volar approach trans trapezoidal the screw placement is more central percutaneous fixation can also be used in delayed and stable non unions if you do 1 cm dissection around the guide wire you can prevent tendon injuries in dorsal approach and arterial injuries in volar approach thank you for time Thank you.